Hi and welcome to episode 8 of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy and in this episode I'll offer various perspectives to help put the timeline of modernity into context, just how rapid and unusual it has been. We're going to start at the beginning of time, 13.8 billion years ago, and mark some key epochs along the way, like the formation of Earth 4.5 billion years ago, life emerging shortly after that, the beginning of our latest era when the asteroid impact killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, this mass extinction event marks a new start to life on Earth. Humans appeared two and a half to three million years ago, and then Homo sapiens about 250 to 300,000 years ago, becoming anatomically modern about 150,000 years ago. And then we get agriculture, which was relatively recent, 10,000 years ago, and was a huge change in the way we lived, seeking a greater degree of control over nature. It led to grain storage, settlements, cities, armies, and the rest, as they say, is history. Then, about 400 years ago, we took the quest for control to new levels with the tools of science coming from the Enlightenment, and then supercharged that process about 150 years ago with fossil fuels and the Industrial Revolution. Most of our ecological damage has been in the last 50 years. So I'm using the term ecocide here as just a shorthand for our ecological nosedive that we looked at in the last episode. That looks like the start of a sixth mass extinction. It's a strong term, but not obviously wrong. And in any case, it's just a shorthand. So we need to compare these things to timescales that we can really imagine or, or scales that we can imagine because the numbers are just kind of large and hard to get our heads around. So I picked two. One is the human lifetime that most of us can directly sense and have a, um, a direct experience with. And the other is uh, distance to some mountainous horizon. These aren't the only two choices. I've played with loads of others, but let's just see where these go. So before the main comparisons, I want to do this warm up. In a series called Metastatic Modernity, it would make sense to compare the timeline of modernity to that of cancer, but it doesn't really work, and I'll explain why. In each case, I'm going to compare the birth of the patient who eventually gets cancer to either the birth of life on Earth or the um, rebirth of life after the last mass extinction event. So in the first case, the cancer only shows up 100 minutes or less than two hours before death, and goes metastatic in just a minute, which is really crazy fast. In the second case, it's only a four-day disease course and goes metastatic for an hour. So both cases are absurdly fast, and that's kind of the point here, that modernity's disease phase and terminal phase are much more rapid than cancer on timescales relevant to life on Earth. And cancer is itself kind of a fast disease, so that is a bit sobering. Okay, so I'm going to do three different comparisons. Each one will have a large table. Uh, there's a lot of information, but there's no need to absorb it all. Um, you can always pause if you want to study it, but you don't really have to because I'll have a story that goes along with each. So in each table, they all look like this, and the left two columns will be the same for each that have the same events and numbers that we went through before in those pictures. Each table will have a line in blue that identifies the starting point in our comparison. And so this first case, we're going to equate a familiar human lifetime, about 75 years, to the lifetime that humans have been on Earth. And that gives us about one day per century. So imagine a 75-year-old person that you know, friend or family member, whose life had been pretty normal. And then about three months ago, they became obsessed with some new hobby that had you really concerned, maybe it's weapons or experimenting with drugs or skydiving, something you could imagine coming to a bad end. So the new hobby meant all new friends, new behavior, new lifestyle, new person, almost unrecognizable. And that's like agriculture, a totally new and out of character way to live on this planet, uh, changing lifestyles completely. So also in a way that raises concerns, it might not go so well. About four days ago, this new hobby took a serious and alarming turn, maybe became machine guns or cliff jumping, something more dangerous. And 
this is like science, kind of amping up those previous behaviors. Uh, yesterday morning, it went to a new extreme level, like bombs or a wingsuit, something, you know, how could that possibly go well? Um, that's fossil fuels, superpowering modernity. Um, today is the anticipated calamity. You kind of saw it coming. It's a stupid thing to do. So we're doing something really stupid, and it's hurting badly on Earth. Uh, life on Earth is in trouble right now. So you saw this coming, and you insisted your friend get help, but they said, oh, don't, I've never been better. This is great. I'm living my best life. And by the way, you know, uh, butt out of my life. This is what I want to be doing. So that's kind of where we are. All right, we'll do a, a second time comparison here. And in this one, maybe what we care about, given our six mass extinction, is the time between mass extinction. So we're going to compare that to a human lifetime. And I've adopted kind of an education theme here. On this scale, humans are uh, just have been on the earth for the equivalent of, say, time in college out of a lifetime. It's not a major chunk of, of that. Homo sapiens, just a single semester out of one's life. Um, agriculture is like an exam week, and it's a much different mode than the rest. Science has only been around for about as long as a single exam takes. Fossil fuels as fleeting as a midterm. Um, and most of our ecological dest destruction has happened in kind of the space of a pop quiz. Uh, so probably everybody's experienced a disastrous kind of grade ruining pop quiz. And that's the moment that we're living in now in our ecological disaster. So let's try one in distance. Um, here, we're going to compare kind of medium distance horizon, 45 kilometers some geological features and compare it to the geological earth. And that gives us one millimeter per century. So we're gonna stand there or imagine standing there looking out at this horizon so we can see the entire earth history out to that horizon. Uh, you know, it's fuzzier in the, in the distance. Um, and what we get there, if we're lucky by the way, we might see the Big Bang 140 kilometers away at some distant peak. But dinosaurs ended around sort of a distance across campus something you could imagine seeing and actually making them out you could you could uh you could see the dinosaurs humans are a single building on the campus and homo uh, homo sapiens just a single office in that building that's the scale compared to the horizon is is earth time so it's very small uh compared to that now agriculture is just the um as a huge change it's just kind of the width of your hand in recorded history, only half of that. Science is a peppercorn. So here's a peppercorn next to Jupiter, remember from uh, episode two. And fossil fuels is the width of a paperclip. So I've got the metal portion here. And most ecological damage is just the thickness of a pencil lead and half a millimeter. And this, by the way, I have a PhD. I don't know if I've ever mentioned uh, it's a little bit worn. Okay, so I recommend you pick one of these and let it sink in. Try to internalize it. Um, it's frighteningly new modernity. It's very unusual. It's causing severe damage to our community of life. It's like a fireworks show. Uh, fireworks shows, as entertaining as they are, end. And they're a very poor prediction of what sky conditions are going to be like for the coming days and weeks and months. Okay, that's it for this episode. Um, in the next one, we're going to look at how we got to this unfortunate place. And in the meantime, I encourage you as always to look at the companion write-up piece on Do the Math. <laughs>